Bonjour et bienvenue Hello and dans welcome to this interview here on France 24. Our guest today is the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Moussa Faki Mohamed. He joins us via satellite from Addis Abeba, the headquarters of the EAU. However, he's more precisely with us from his home because he's self-quarantined after a member of his team tested positive for the coronavirus. Thank you very much for being with us. First question, how is the quarantine going and how are you? I'm doing quite well, and my quarantine time is going quite well. As for my staff member who tested positive, he's doing well, and I hope that by the end of the week he will be able to leave hospital. You yourself have been tested, and the tests were negative, correct? Yes, that's exactly right. Of course, the coronavirus is an issue, a topic of controversy, of anguish here in France and many other countries. The UN Secretary General said he feared there would be millions of deaths on the African continent. Are you also fearing that this could happen on the continent? I think that this current pandemic is an awful pandemic. It is one that is affecting the entire world. In fact, no country, no continent will be spared. And I think the statement made by the UN Secretary General, it needs to be taken like a message, a very welcome message that is to be sent out to the entire international community to call on all countries to stand united in solidarity. Solidarity for those countries with little means, especially those countries in the African continent. It is very true that a number of measures have been taken by countries, by the African Union. For example, on the 22nd of February, ministers from the African Union met and they agreed upon a continental-wide strategy to deal with the current challenge. Up until now, there have only been very few cases, especially when we compare our figures to other continents. There are only roughly 10,000 cases, but the pandemic is spreading at a considerable pace. So we have to be prepared. And to do that, we have to learn from those countries that have fallen foul of this pandemic before us. Of course, some measures have been taken for years. For example, here in France, elsewhere in Europe, lockdown, essentially. The president of Benin, Patrice Salon, said basically his country has got the means from rich countries to confine its population. Do you agree that a lockdown is not applicable in Africa? I believe that the lockdown measures can't be applied in the same way in all countries. You have to take into account a number of differences, sociological, economic, even cultural differences. It is true that in Africa, in the African continent, there are a lot of poor people living in major cities, and therefore it would be very hard to apply a total lockdown in these situations. So countries need to adapt the measures to their own situations. They have to try and limit large gatherings to avoid the spread of the virus. But to do that, they also need to take into account their own realities. Of course, uh, several days ago, you spoke with a dozen heads of state from the continent, the director of the WHO, the French president, Emmanuel Macron. There is word that there could be an initiative, a French initiative, with those countries. Can we expect something strong in the coming days? First and foremost, a little over a week ago, during the G20 summit, in fact, uh, just a day before then, there was a teleconference that was held between the acting chairman and members of the African Union Bureau of Heads of State and Government. And we also had Africa D CDC, which is our own counter-pandemic uh, institution. And they met to discuss and assess the current situation from an African point of view. And this was 
endorsed by Ramaphosa, the acting chairman. And then also on the 3rd of April, another phone call was held between members of the five heads of state, as well as a number of other heads of state, uh, including France. And in fact, the French president made a statement at the end of our conversation to show France's support and to support our message, our message to the international community to call on solidarity, because it is an international challenge, challenge which requires an international response. But do you expect a strong initiative from France, the UN, the EU for Africa? There are initiatives out there. The United Nations, the World Bank, the IMF, they have all put in their own initiatives. And we're likely to see initiatives from the, in, from the EU because tomorrow I'll be having a call with President van der Leyen. And we also have initiatives in support of us coming from China and other countries. I think that there is an increase in solidarity. But I think that we need to see these good intentions being turned into good deeds. According to a study of African Union experts, uh, the pandemic could threaten some 20 million jobs on the continent because obviously it's a sanitary crisis, but obviously very soon an economic crisis, a very serious one. This crisis is not just going to affect the African continent, it will affect the entire world. We hear a lot of people talking about how there will be a before and after COVID-19. And these past few years, the African continent has done its utmost to improve its socio-economic situation. But we are still in a fragile situation and jobs are a major issue, as it will be an issue for the entire world. But it's especially an issue for the African continent. And we will will face future hardships. But to deal with this, we require solidarity. Because we need to ensure that this pandemic is not just a plight brought on by multilateralism, but it needs to serve as a hymn, as an anthem for multilateralism, an anthem for solidarity. Because we need to see new deals and agreements between nations. There's a very concrete example. Uh, the debts, multilateral, bilateral of African countries. Are you calling for a moratorium or renegotiation of this debt in order to help those countries confront this crisis and what comes after? You're exactly right. The African finance ministers have met and they have already come out with a number of forecasts, especially in relation to how the debt will play out. For example, they already say that for outstanding debt for 2020, there is roughly $44 billion at stake. But this is something in addition to the fact that the African continent needs rapid support in terms of liquidity for us to be able to first and foremost deal with this crisis from a health point of view and then to deal with obviously and quite naturally all of the humanitarian needs that we will have in the near future because there are a lot of refugees, a lot of displaced persons throughout our continent. So states need considerable support and they need that now. What do you mean? mean by a lot? You have a number. Well, moreover, I would just like to say that there are a number of states that are already very fragile. I could quote, for example, the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of uh, the Congo. These are countries that require urgent support and they need concrete support. I would actually like to convey a message. I would like to say that there are countries out there that need the support and any intervention that we require needs to be void of any form of bureaucratic red tape. How much do you need? What's your estimate? The early estimates from our finance ministers set the needs at roughly 100 to 150 billion 
that, but that's in a first-off situation. Obviously, as we assess the fallout of this crisis, that figure may rise. Very quickly, uh, Mr. President, we don't have much time left, but there are areas where fighting is continuing, even intensifying, because the world is busy elsewhere. In the Sahel region, in Libya, are you concerned that some are benefiting from this crisis to fight even more? Quite unfortunately, the issues that you're mentioning are long-standing issues. But we have never stopped trying to raise international awareness as to the gravity of the situation in Libya, the situation in Sahel region and the Lake Chad area. But these are just a few of the situations we could talk about. But on top of these situations, we have to add the new health crisis. And, unfortunately, a number of terrorist groups may seek to profit from the current situation or further destabilize countries. And this is something that we should never lose sight of. Just very last word on Libya. The African Union that wanted a reconciliation forum between Libyans, it seems mission impossible. Impossible? I'm not too sure. However, the current situation recalls for us to act. And we will continue to stay in contact with conditions permit with all of the stakeholders. And we definitely support of an inclusive inter-Libyan forum. And we will be there to ensure that the parties can reach a political solution. Moussa Fakim Mohamed, thank you very much for being with us uh, from your residency in Addis Abeba. Good luck for the end of your quarantine. and. See you soon. As a field reporter, you really get a sense of just how important it is to be able to go and check out things for yourselves on the ground. One example which stays in my mind is when I went up to northeastern Nigeria with my colleague Jonathan Walsh, and we wanted to do a report about the impact the Islamist group Boko Haram had left on the communities there. Um, and we were being told by the Nigerian army for months that they had won the ground war, that the militants no longer posed a threat. And as soon as we were in the zone for ourselves, we could see that that was just clearly not the case. Um, there were some roads that our local fixer, our producer, was absolutely terrified to take for fear of being kidnapped. We were flown out to enclaves of land by the UN by helicopter because we couldn't drive there. People were too afraid to go back to their homes a kilometre away because there was still fighting going on. And we even located one active Boko Haram member living in a refugee camp who told us he was still in regular contact with fighters out in the woods. So that really highlighted for me how important it is to go and see for yourselves what's happening and not believe what's in official statement, press releases or communiques. Liberté, égalité, actualité. Sur France 24, la nuit, on est très fiers d'accompagner les Amériques dans leur soirée, de voir l'Asie se réveiller, et on est là jusqu'à ce que Paris s'éveille. France 24 est plus que seulement noticias. C'est liberté, égalité et actualité. Nous donnons un pas plus loin, avec des informations au moment, pour analyser, comprendre, poner en perspectiva y debatir. En live from Paris, nos correspondants around the world keep you up to date. Mina tabia en yakuna shiaru al horria, ou chasat al horit al tabir, fi belad horit al tabir. Liberté, égalité, actualité.